Hi, I'm Andrew from Qubit, here with Annie Motto at NAMM 2018. We have three very exciting new modules to show you. First up is Nebulae V2. So it's a re-release of our original granular sampler. You can load in your audio files via USB flash drive, and we've added since the original version live audio input. Stereo inputs and outputs along the bottom, and we revamped the entire granular section in comparison to the original. So along the top, we have our loop start and size controls. Size adjusts the size of your loop. Size adjusts where you're at in the sample. We have independent pitch and speed controls. So you adjust one, it doesn't affect the other at all. So speed can go four times as fast forwards and four times as fast backwards, and then all the way down to pretty much stop in the middle. Pitch and speed are both encoders, so if you want to get back to your original speed, you just press it, it goes back to your original setting. Below that, we have our pitch control. Two octaves up and three octaves down. And just like speed, you can press it and get back to your original pitch. A few associated with it is our bolt per octave jack. Perfect bolt per octave tracking across all five octaves. So very useful for keeping it in tune with the rest of your patch. Here we have our pulse output. What this is, is a gate output that's triggered at the end of every loop. Every time it loops around, it's going to spit out a gate. It's very useful for clocking other elements in your patch and keeping it in time with your sample. Beneath that, we have our granular section. The blend control is your dry wet between your dry signal and your granular stream. Density and overlap. So density is really the speed of the grains, and overlap is the size. One thing that's very different from the original nebulae is overlap is now available. You can overlap your grains, have them happening on top of each other, which provides a really unique type of sound. And we've also added a window control, so bring up density a little. Four window shapes are available. Two that we created, Canning and Gaussian. So that's gonna change the overall tambler, timbre of our granular section. Every parameter on it has full CV control, gates for our button controls along the bottom. We have next, which just cycles through all the files on your drive. Source switches between your USB flash drive and your live audio input. Reset, just reset your playhead to the start of your current loop. Extremely low latency, sub five milliseconds, so you can go as fast as you want. And then freeze, which just locks in the current pitch and timbre of your of your sound. So it just locks it in wherever it's at at that moment. So if we switch over to our live audio input, we currently have the cord going through a low pass filter. Hit record. You can record up to five minutes of stereo audio. Still have your independent pitch and speed. Yeah. And you can toggle back and forth between your recorded audio or your USB flash drive with a gate signal or the buggy. So that's the Nebulae. We're also going to be firmly supporting our alternate firmware functionality as we did before in a much more smart, intelligent way. We're going to be supporting pure data, C sound, and super collider files, as well as bare bones C programs if you wanted to go that route. It's going to be available in early March, and it's going to retail for $4.29, which is the same price, the same price as the original Nebulae. To the right of that, we have our scan. This is an organic wavetable oscillator, and the reason we're calling it organic is it just feels alive. Every time you touch it, you're going to find these new sections and sounds that you didn't hear before. It uses a technique called scan synthesis, which was pioneered by Max Matthews in the 90s, and it's, what's really neat about it is it's virtually unexplored as a synthesis generation method. The way it works is it constantly generates wavetables on the fly, and it uses this metaphor of a string a vibrating string to affect the way these wavetables are generated. So you'll notice the controls, mass, center, stiffness. These are affecting the way this string vibrates 
and consequently it affects the timbre of the sound. At the top right we have our hammer section. This is what's currently exciting our string, our metaphorical string. The shape, the shape of the hammer that's touching it, so that's going to give us some harmonics. Position, this is the position along the string that it's being excited at. Very similar to a fretboard on a violin or a guitar. It's going to change our sound again. And then the strength is the amplitude at which it's causing the string to vibrate. One really unique thing about this entire module is once you turn a control, it can take anywhere between 3 seconds to 30 minutes to finally settle into the repeating sound. The best way to show that is to turn up dampening. You really hear the sound just evolve and it just kind of, once you get the string operating in a section where it's moving a lot and it's not too stiff, it's going to keep going and the sound is going to continue to evolve until it settles back down into a groove. We turn stiffness, it's going to add some noise to our signal. If we make the string too stiff, our sound will die away entirely. Which is actually really neat because it allows us to manually excite the string. And we can do that via a gate signal as well. So what's cool is we're, we already have the basics of a full voice on a module right now. All we need is a sequence. So once we plug our sequence in... Very unique timbre already. Once we get the controls up, and you'll hear it evolve even more. No external filters, no external VCAs, it's just single module with a gate signal and a sequence coming into both rockets. Last but not least, we have an audio input so that you can send an audio signal in and cause that to excite the string. So if we had taken this out and let the sound die away, you could use any audio signal, plug it in, it works just like an envelope follower, and it, it then becomes the signal that's exciting your string, and you can get even more unique esoteric sounds that aren't available on board already. That's the scan, it's going to be available in May, and the price is going to be $349. Then the last module we're announcing this year is the Synapse. So the Synapse is a cross-fading switch. It's got eight inputs along the top and seven unique outputs along the bottom. The way it works, each pair of inputs cascades down into a cross-fading circuit which forms our four channels. Once it's in the cross-fading circuit, you can morph between the two signals with a knob and the LED shows you which signal you're currently listening to. And you can also CV through the two signals. That works on each channel. We're using 2164 VCA chips for the crossfading, so it's extremely low distortion, very high quality audio crossfading. Each channel cascades down from its crossfade circuit to an individual output along the bottom. So you'll see we have four outputs, which comprise our four channels. Then we have our switching functionality. So if we move our terminal encoder, it's gonna take all of these outputs and shift them. So you notice our blue input is now going to the second output. Green to green. So you can still see where the outputs are going by the LEDs. Now it's 100% clickless switching. We're using zero crossing detection to eliminate any clicks and pops that you would normally hear. And once, say you get it out of order, you're not sure how to get it back, you just hit scatter and they all normal back to their vertical orientation. Underneath, underneath our individual outputs, we have our sums channels 1 and 2 are summed post switch so that as you're adjusting this the, that sum output's going to change and then 3 and 4 which is the sum of channels 3 and 4 same as that one and then all channels sum together all these controls have CV so you can use a gate signal to advance your switches you can use a CV signal to slide through them and you can use a gate signal to cause scatter to take place Right here we have our memory control. Now what this is, is you have eight available memory slots that you can store your current VCA positions. So, so say we wanted to, we got a sound we liked, we wanted to save that. It's gonna flash, show you that it's saved, and you have that stored there forever. Come to this one, we'll move this here. Hit save, and we'll get one more for good measure. Now, 
you notice our sound is changing to what we stored there. Now you can CV through these or use the knob. As you bring up inertia, it crossfades between positions instead of an abrupt change. So you see it, it's morphing between the, the memory positions now. This channel also has an internal LFO modulation signal that's accessible by holding the terminal encoder and then turning its associated crossfader knob. So if you just hold terminal, turn it up, we're going to have our LFOs start to run. So this is internal modulation of the uh, crossfade positions. The frequency of these LFOs is controlled with the inertia knob. Makes it really easy to just load in eight signals and get this evolving soundscape without any external modulation sources. And that's the Synapse. It will be available in June, and then the price is going to be $339. Thanks for stopping by.